today we have our third guest speaker who is going to talk about finding street gang members uh, or their profiles using Twitter data. So there's going to be uh, uh, presented by Lakshika Padasurya. Uh, she has recently accepted a very competitive position at Grace Note and will join the Silicon Valley pretty soon. Uh, but today she's going to talk about her research uh, in using social media data. So those of you I do know there are at least three to four groups who pitched using uh, text data or social media data for the final projects. So she's going to share some of the resources with you guys. And again, if you have any questions, she is the right person to ask. As is, as is Sanjay, I was on the camera out there. Uh, so uh, again, Monday we do have the midterms. So please, uh, may I put the topics. I mean, it's all basically everything we covered till uh, through Monday. Uh, this week. Uh, there's a cheat sheet so you can use front and back, you can color code it, do whatever you want on it. That's going to be your reference for the uh, midterms. Uh, do make sure and uh, look at your pop quizzes. They are definitely very representative of the questions you see in the midterms. Also, uh, focus on the forward propagation in your neural networks. Back prop I'm not going to ask on. So again, any questions, feel free to ask. So today, after Lakshika's talk, if you have questions, please let me know. And again, my office hours are, uh, I guess, Monday would be, yeah, Monday, I guess you can still ask if you have any last minute questions, 3.30 uh, to 4.30. But again, any emails, I'll definitely respond. So without further ado, uh, Lakshika. Hello everyone, thank you for having me here today. Can you all hear me? So uh, I'm going to talk about my master research on uh, finding street gang member profiles on Twitter. So uh, in during this talk, I will also uh, talk about some technical details. Uh, and because of this particular problem domain, in my content slides there are some bad language, so please bear with me on that. <laughs> so uh, I go ahead. Okay. So, what motivated us to work on this research problem? So, this is a uh, this is a story which was reported by mainstream media in 2013. These are two tweets from two rival gang members. So, they both uh, wanted to be musicians. Uh, so, the the one at the top is uh, his name is Legal Jojo. Uh, he wanted to be a rapper and he's again a gang member. So. Uh, since they both wanted to be musicians, what they did was they each recorded music videos and posted those in their YouTube channel. So, uh, and their music reflected the Chicago street gang styles where they threaten each other. So, since they, they have posted videos on uh, YouTube where they threaten each other in YouTube, it started the conversation where they were threatening uh, in the YouTube comments and so on. And then it led to Twitter, where they started threatening more and more. And then after that, they took those threatening messages and they uh, went into the streets. So we are uh, the the first uh, Twitter, he, uh, the first tweet is from. He, okay, let me, so he was in his rival's territory, and he revealed his location, saying, I'm on. Uh, 69 and he was unfortunately shot dead after that and so this is an example where uh, street gang members they are very uh, vocal in social media and uh, the threatening messages they, uh, that, that may result in uh, such unfortunate situations in real world so and also this article was recently reported in uh, Wall Street Journal. So they talk about uh, that the social media has uh, accelerated uh, the gang violence problem. And they and, uh, and Facebook has about 10,000 people who are manually looking at the content people are posting to find out dangers and hate free speech. So all these examples shows that street gang members operate on social media and they actually take matters into the streets and resolve conflicts with guns. So, 
So people have worked on uh, uh, research yeah, about GANs, and lately they have been. Uh, there are some researchers where people have studied uh, gang activity on social media. So their work says that uh, gang members mainly use social media to post videos or watch videos, and also to uh, uh, show uh, their firearms or uh, the money that they have. Uh, they have got from uh, drug sales and all that. So they like to brag about their behavior in social media. And they are obviously fearless about what they post. And they also threaten their rival gang members. And uh, although the gang members are fearless when, they, when it comes to Twitter like social media platforms, it is very challenging to use that data for social good. The problem is that gang members is a very small population in Twitterverse. So we have about uh, 330 million Twitter users, but the GAN population is very small. So in order to find out uh, these GAN member profiles so that uh, people can actually intervene. So there are many social workers who are willing to intervene and resolve these conflicts with, uh, with it's always complex uh, before they get back, uh, like the situation I talked about uh, in the second slide. So, but the problem is they it, it is a tedious task because it's really uh, difficult to find these profiles and uh, find out all these messages uh, they are checking each other. So because of that, uh, so our approach is to find such gang member profiles so that uh, we can help out people such as social workers resolve these kind of things. So uh, this motivated us to develop methods automatically identify gang member Twitter profiles. So the work that I'm talking today was presented in Asona, and we also have two other publications out of this work. And uh, our work was also uh, covered by Motherhood and also recently uh, from IEEE as well as Right State Institute. So uh, the problem that we address is an our problem, and we also had to create a data set for this particular problem. And uh, so we, we, the approach that we take is a machine learning approach. So we think of this problem as a profile classification problem. So people have worked on Twitter profile classification before. For example, to find out the gender or the brand loyalty and so on. Uh, so in those such in those approaches, what they have done is they have mainly focused on using tweets to create features. But in our scenario, we came up with a couple of content types, different types of content types for our particular problem. So, uh, so similar to any uh, research, what we normally do is we study the previous work and we try to see what they have done and what we can improve upon. So uh, this is an old problem, but still people have studied uh, gang member activities on social media. So we were looking for any data sets that we could use, but we couldn't find any. The one that we have is, uh, is a data set which only has 91 profiles, uh, which was uh, done by uh, Sanjay. So in that data set, what they have done is they have used very region specific keywords. So uh, they have used keywords such as uh, BDK and GDK, which are actually gang names to collect uh, Twitter profiles. So uh, we are focused on uh, creating a model which is location neutral. So we don't want to be limited to a particular region. And then uh, 91 profiles is a very inadequate for us to train a good model. So because of that, uh, we can't use that data set. So we, and then we ended up creating our own data set. So, uh, so how do we go about creating a data set? So we don't have a list of gang member profiles. Uh, we don't have any resources to find out. Like we don't have a, a known set of gang member profiles. And we still want to do, uh, come up with profiles from uh, without uh, being biased towards a particular location. So we studied the uh, previous work, and then we saw that, uh, especially uh, Sanjay's work, they have seen that gang members use certain words irrespective of their location. 
So we use those words, I'll talk about that in detail. And we, we use those words to collect Twitter profiles. And uh, so just by uh, having that particular word, it does not mean that person is a gang member because anyone can use those words. So we ended up uh, manually verifying each and every profile. So, so this is the data collection process. So these are the uh, words that we used. So gang members, they use the terms such as free the guys. Uh, so these were very common irrespective of their location. They normally show their support to their fellow gang members who are in jail. They show their greed towards uh, the gang members who have passed away. And also they show their anger towards law enforcement. But uh, as I said earlier, it doesn't mean that any of, like if I just have one of these in my tweet, uh, doesn't mean that I am a gang member. So we still have to do some manual work and make sure that they are gang members. So, so what we did was we used a Twitter and searched for profiles that have any of these safe words in their profile description. And uh, we also used uh, so and then we also used a, a resource called Hip Wiki where they have listed uh, gang members who have been like gangster have been murdered and we manually looked for their profiles in Twitter. So after that, now we have a, a list of Twitter profiles. We did a manual verification for those profiles. So during the manual verification, we used three uh, human annotators. So what they did was they, they looked at, they went through each and every profile and they looked for multiple strong indications. They looked at the tweets, the videos, the profile pictures, profile description to see whether there, there are any self-identified, whether, whether he has self-identified himself or herself in the tweet profile. So unless there are multiple uh, strong indications, so gang members, even though it's hard to believe, gang members are five vocal, they are really fearless, uh, so they don't really mind what they post in the social media, so we could clearly see uh, strong indications. And so we had three annotators, so we, we uh, so if all three agree that this profile is likely belongs to a gang member, then we label that profile as gang member profile. So in this, we call this positive class the positive instances. Okay. Uh, so we have a list of profiles now, and then we wanted to uh, expand it further. So to do that, what we did was we looked at three tweets and also the follower following network. And uh, we did not, we limited our, uh, we limited these two approaches using the tweets and follower following networks because we don't want our model to be way too biased to particular gangs. So we did it like minimally. Uh, those two because of, but otherwise what will happen is, uh, uh, so let's say I have uh, 100 gang members from uh, Chicago and if I get all the uh, follower network and retweets and then again manually verify all these profiles, my data might be biased towards that particular question. So we did that email. So, uh, so that's what we did. And then we noticed that most of the, uh, the majority in our data set are self-identified gang members. Uh, they have self-identified themselves in the profile description or in one of their tweets. So, uh, so our data set has 400 gang member Twitter profiles. So these are positive instances. And then uh, we have uh, non-gang member profiles. So uh, initially what we did was we used uh, Twitter streaming API. So Twitter has a streaming API where I can collect real-time tweets. So uh, what I did was I collected some uh, real-time tweets, and I got the author of each of these tweets, and then I manually labeled those. So uh, initially I had about 2,000 profiles, uh, which are random Twitter profiles, and I manually labeled and made sure that those are uh, ordinary users. So that is my negative instances. So, but the problem was that when I, at the end of the day, when I was, uh, uh, when I was done with training the model and everything. So I got perfect results in my model, 
uh, for my uh, cross validation results. But if I tested it on some unseen data, it was not performing well. Then that made me realize that uh, so the random data set that I have used as negative instances, they uh, so obviously the gang members curse a lot, like the language is different from the ordinary users. So my uh, uh, random profiles were way too nice in their language. So as soon as someone is uh, having a bad language, uh, the model was too biased towards that, so it started labeling those uh, as positive. So it was way too, so it was underrepresented, so I wanted to, so then what I did was I ended up uh, adding another 865 profiles. So these profiles are the profiles that were, that were using those keywords or they were following uh, gang members or uh, they, they used to retweet gang member uh, tweets. So those profiles had some uh, indications like they, they use like a language similar to gang members but they are not gang members. So that means, uh, so once I added those profiles, 865 profiles, what happened was my model kind of learned that uh, having one or two bad words or whatever it is does not make one. Uh, like, uh, it's, it's all right. So that made my model less biased towards the data set. So, uh, so, so what I mean by that is, uh, so in here, the profiles that were labeled as negative during my data collection process, they represented the family or the friends of gang members, but are not affiliated to a gang themselves. So uh, that was uh, something that I realized while I was thinking. And then, uh, so, so these are the uh, statistics. So 400 uh, gang member profiles, 865 non gang member profiles, and um, so, and I collect for each profile, I collected tweets for the profiles. So, I talk about how you can collect tweets. So, this is for uh, students who have not done this before, uh, who have not looked on Twitter data. So, uh, in Twitter, there's an API uh, where you can uh, collect tweets. So. Uh, what Twitter returns is each tweet is going to be a JSON file where uh, you have uh, uh, the period time or the number of tweets, the user description and all that. So all the data of tweet you can retrieve it using the Twitter API. So uh, the Twitter API, uh, now uh, there are various uh, wrapper APIs which are very easy to use. Uh, for example, uh, I, I use Tweety all the time. It's written Python and it's very easy because I don't have to do a lot of coding. Uh, Tweety itself takes care of all these uh, uh, time limits and all that. So, uh, and then uh, in Twitter, you can use uh, the Twitter streaming API to collect the real time tweets. So, to see what people are talking right now and all that. And you can use Twitter regular API, search API. Uh, to search for tweets with certain keywords. That's what I did uh, to find profiles uh, using those uh, keywords. And then, uh, so to collect, uh, so I mentioned that for each profile in my data set, I collected tweets from those profiles. So for that, uh, I can collect uh, a Twitter user's timeline using the Twitter API. So Twitter allows me to collect at most Recent 3,200 tweets from each profile. So it's at most, doesn't mean that everyone has 3,200 tweets in their profiles. So, so in my data set, uh, so for each profile, I have the tweets, the, the profile images, and uh, the profile description and all that. So anyway, the, of course, the profile should be public. If it is uh, protected, we don't have access. So, uh, so then uh, we call this, uh, we call, uh, since we are dealing with tweets, again, natural language, this is short text. So all of these, it doesn't matter whether it's short text or long text, is natural language. So we call this natural language processing. 
Anyway, we try to understand what people are trying to say in, uh, using the machine. Uh, we call it natural language processing. So there are uh, many challenges when it comes to natural language processing. And there are different ways to deal with those. And these are very fundamental things that we normally do when it comes to text data. So uh, to organization, basically, if you have a sentence, you try to break, break that down into words, uh, maybe by punctuations uh, and so on. And then, uh, so we also normally, so these are like practices we do when it comes to text data. And we use text data for uh, machine learning. Uh, we use stop word removal. So there are a uh, list of stop words. There are, uh, say, for, for example, these are some very common stop words. There's a long list. And uh, what we do is, uh, so stop words are not useful most of the time. So what we do is we try to get rid of those stop words. So it uh, reduces our feature dimensionality. So, so anyway, uh, not all of these work sometimes Having stop words may help you, so you have to try it and everything. Uh, so, and then also part of, uh, and then, okay, so removing hyperlinks in Twitter uh, and also the usernames in tweets. And uh, text normalization, for example, you may have like uh, words like these. So we try to do like, if you have, let's say, uh, oh, repeating, any letter repeating more than four times, you use that in the or something like that using regular expressions. So these are very common. So, uh, and most of the packages, OAPI supports all these things. And then uh, part of speech tagging. So let's say you have a sentence, and then uh, you try to tag that sentence, saying whether it's a noun, verb, an adjective. So those things might also help in your machine learning algorithm. Uh, and also stemming. Let's say uh, instead of uh, the word running, you get the waveform <coughs> run like that. So these are uh, some uh, pre-processing we do to clean and improve uh, the data set. And also, uh, instead of having uh, each word as a feature, we can create n grams. So n grams is n sequence of words. Uh, so we can do two grams. <coughs> The, the next word and so on to create the features for the classifier. And uh, we normally do a bag of words model where we, so we have less number of uh, Gamma profiles compared to non Gamma profiles 400 and uh, 2865. <coughs> so uh, to make sure that uh, our research with the science. Uh, are not very biased towards the majority, the, ma uh, the major class. We are reporting uh, results for each and every class. That is, I'm reporting uh, results for the positive class and the negative class separately. So, uh, first, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we try each content type individually. So, tweets, tweets alone, emoji, and then profile data, image tags and content from YouTube comments. So we have five content types, and so we, uh, so for each content type, we try four classifiers. So five by four is uh, 20 experiments here. So, and then uh, for each content type, we only use profiles that has at least one of those content. Like let's say emoji, for emoji, I, so if you see, for tweets, I have uh, uh, 3,265 profiles. For emoji, I only have, I have a less number of profiles. Because if a profile does not have any emoji at all, I just remove that. Because this is just to see whether uh, emoji can be used alone uh, for this task. So that's why we have different numbers in each experiment. And then we report precision, recall, and F score. Uh, so, and then, so our focus is more towards uh, the GAN profiles. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, the non GAN profiles are anyway giving very good results. So, 94 is very good. So, we are more focused on this, and you can see uh, uh, we 
get best results from the tweets because we have more text uh, for a profile from their tweets compared to. So if a tweet is uh, was 140, now it's double that. But uh, profile description is much less. Like if someone has like how the tweet is good compared to just using the profile description. So I think that played a role uh, for tweets to be a good performance. Um, and then after that, I think, yeah, so, and then YouTube gave us again for nine players. So we saw different uh, results in different experiments. So, but we saw that uh, using profile data and image tags alone didn't give us good performance compared to the rest. So this is the best performance from profile image tags and profile data. Those were much less compared to uh, tweets and all that. So, and then after that what we did was we uh, created two models where uh, both models contain all these content types. So model one has all content types, tweets, emoji, profile data, and then images and YouTube content. Uh, the same is, uh, model two is similar. The only difference is that for model one, we use all the profiles, but for model two, we have only 1,300 profiles because uh, if, so we made sure that each profile in model two had all five uh, content types. So uh, not all, right? So, so if let's say a profile has all the content types but does not have uh, image tags, then we <coughs> don't use that to train our data set. So the model two is much more complete because each profile has all these different types of data for that particular profile. So we ran the same experiment, same uh, algorithms, and then the F score. Uh, we got best F score for model one from Random Forest, which is 0.73. So if you, this was 0.72. The best individually was 0.72. And then for model one, we outperformed that, which was 0.73. And then model two, because the data is more complete, uh, we got a better F score. So it outperformed model one and we got 0.77. So this shows that the heterogeneous features we used uh, were useful when it comes to uh, identifying these profiles. So having all these uh, heterogeneous data together improved our classifier. So, and then, uh, so this is the results that I showed you earlier. These are from uh, cross validation. And we also did uh, a test on unseen data. So these data we have not used to train our model, and then uh, we have like this different from cross validation, it's somewhat similar, but this is like totally unseen. Uh, so what we did was uh, we collected a large number of profiles where they are slightly to be gang members, like gang neighborhoods, uh, from south side of Chicago, and then also <coughs> from Los Angeles. So for this we use again. Uh, Twitter streaming API, so real-time tweets from those locations. So in Twitter, we can uh, say, uh, give me only tweets from this location, uh, the API support that. So we collected, uh, we again got the authors for those tweets, and then uh, populated profiles for each and everyone. But uh, this data set, because we have so many uh, profiles, uh, I think there are about 26,000, so we did not manually annotate those. Uh, so what we did was we ran our trained model. The model uh, which, is, which has been trained using uh, all these content types in our entire data set, we, tried, we ran that on our uh, unseen data, and we looked at the results. So, the profiles, so we only got a few number of profiles uh, tagged to be positive because uh, even though we collected tweets from that particular location, it does not mean everyone tweets. So it's again a less, less population. So uh, we saw that uh, 
the profiles which were tagged as and uh, they displayed the weapons in their profile images. They had somewhat gang related names in their profile description and also they uh, frequently use curse words uh, and refer to gang members as their homies. So we saw few indications anyway, uh, this is a uh, uh, so these are only suggestions. Uh, someone manually who is aware of that location should be able to verify those. Uh, so, and then we also looked at uh, the most frequent words found by our models, and then uh, in their profiles, in their tweets, and then in the emoji. And these are some uh, tweets uh, we saw from that uh, test data label as possible. These are the results from the for the unseen data. We did uh, a qualitative analysis instead of a quantitative because we haven't really uh, manually labeled our 26,000 unseen data set. So, so in summary, uh, so we developed a method to identify gang profiles on Twitter. Our method utilized multiple types of content in Twitter and then uh, we showed that using different content types can improve the performance of the classifier. And, uh, we, and later we also extended this work with uh, word embedding uh, so to improve the results. Uh, then these are the extensions. And these are my advances, uh, Dr. Shet and Dr. Dahl. Um, and uh, Sanjay is my calculator. Questions? Any questions? When you're um, dealing with things that are a bit uncertain, like, what are the uh, visual strategies to present it to things that's like? When you have the tweet data, mm -hmm. you were talking about putting it into uh, a big bag. Mm -hmm. But how do you go about from there doing any meaningful calculations on that? Okay. So, uh, so what I normally do is so uh, so we have we have machine learning algorithms which we can use, right? And depending on the application, the approach, uh, they may give different results. So what we want to make sure is that we give, so if you give garbage in, garbage out, right? So we want to make sure that we give proper data. So that's why we need to look at the features uh, and find out what would be good features, what, what are the distinguishing features for this particular problem and try to give those and see how it performs. So I tried a bag of words. Bag of words is basically you have, let's say you have a document, and you just get the words and the frequencies. Uh, it's a set of, uh, it's a set where you have each word and the frequency of that word within the document. So, uh, so, all like, so in bag of words, you can do some frequency or you can do TFID. And there are other forms of, uh, so we represent the word as a vector, like uh, the, that the feature is going to be, let's say, the word flower, and the value of the feature would be the term frequency, or the TF, or term frequency weighted by the TFID, or a Boolean value saying, uh, this profile has the word flower or not. So uh, we normally try all these different ways uh, and compare like, uh, do a lot of experiments until we are satisfied with the results we see. And uh, so it all depends on, uh, and again we, so a tweet itself may not be meaningful. Uh, so, and then if it is not meaningful for us, how can a machine understand? So we need to do some, uh, processing and remove all the garbage and all that. So before we uh, train our model. So it was, it's always trial and error, I believe. Can you give an example, like say the sentence, the sky is the color blue. Mm -hmm. 
just showing the theta frequency, maybe, and maybe to so, yeah. explain, you know. Because chi is. Yeah. And I'll probably set the color, the color blue. Say five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. features we extract because raw text you can't just throw in. Well, there are some models you can throw yeah, in directly, so, but. So all these things you can actually, so you still need to know what it is, but uh, <coughs> it's a So if I go to psychic plan. lot of these uh, processing uh, steps is so that you can get numeric values instead of the text values so that you can throw it into your machine learning system. And also you can do uh, feature selection. So this is uh, n grams. Uh, so you have, this is the sentence. And if n equals 2, you are looking at 5 grams. So we create uh, 5 grams using like the next word. So instead of using a uh, unigram, let's say, it's, so in the back of words, uh, earlier we just use one word and gave the term frequency. Instead of that, we can do the cow complex one. So sometimes it may be useful because we have the context. Like uh, instead of having one word, two words may represent more meaning. Sometimes it all depends. So, and if you do uh, three grams, the card jumps and all that. So if I do um, okay, so in 
psychic learn there is a calm vectorizer. So this does the phase extraction as well. So if you input, uh, so the input can be a file name. Then you can say whether you want to organize it, remove the stop words, and uh, whether you want to make everything lower case so you remove all the capitalizations. So these are very basic uh, things we want to do. Uh, and so, so most of the time you can use, so you don't have a way in memory, you can simply use whatever accomplish and uh, use it for your feature extraction or feature selection. Any other questions? And so let me show you quickly. So this is a, such a time saver if you are collecting tweets. So it's only cable lines so of only a few lines of start talking about evaluating your results. Uh, it said that you represented Twitter profiles using unigrams. Does that refer to like their tweets or like their Twitter profile names? Flower in there, 
or whether the flower is zero or whether the flower is five. That is what I ended up using. So it was both the profile description as well as the tweet, as well as clarify tags, all of that. Yeah. So initially I tried only tweets to create the uh, unigrams and only emojis, like individually or five types. And then later the final model had everything together. But I made sure that I gave different uh, names for the features. Let's say if I have the word uh, school in the profile description, I have, let's say, the feature name would be something like school uh, tree or something. Uh, and then in the uh, tree, I'll do like school tree. Some like very unique terms so that uh, it will be different. The features would be different. Why would you? Why would Help. Uh, so let's say uh, so profile uh, for tweets, right? So there are a lot of text for that tweet, and then for profile, it's a limited set of characters. So I just wanted to separate those, especially when it comes to emoji. So I did not want to uh, let's say laugh emoji. I made sure that I gave a different name than the word laugh in the tweet. So I made sure that they are, they are unique features, even though they have different words. So uh, based on where that word is, I made sure that it is unique. So it might have a different meaning also, yeah. especially in the yeah. emoji context. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, great. Thank you very much.